Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Coach's Corner here for Canfield, all brought to you by Coca's Pizza. Uh, Joe Ignacio with us here, or Ignacio, as you corrected me yesterday or last week uh, in the in the old country. Um, Coach, in all seriousness, tough week for the Cardinals, uh, but you went up against a, a team that was very good. We all knew it was very good. We all knew that you guys were going to hang with them. What did you learn from your team week one? Yeah, so, you know, we knew coming in that they had 20 to 22 returning starters back, but, you know, that's no excuse. I thought our defense played tremendous and kept it close, even at 13 and a, 13 nothing at half. Um, we shot our foot ourselves in the foot offensively multiple times. You know, we had 10 series on O, and, you know, there was only a single series where we didn't have multiple mistakes or more. Um, and that series that we didn't have any mistakes, we scored. So it was a good learning point for our kids to understand that if we eliminate mistakes against a good opponent, then, then you'll be in every football game that we play that's on our schedule. Saturday, film day. I mean, in the film room, it, it's obviously tense coming off of an L. What, did you, what do you want the kids to know about coming into that room um, ready to learn, ready to, to kind of take their game to a next level and to, to make sure that turn the page, whether it's win or loss, to that next opponent? Yeah, so we, we tell them early on, number one, come in with thick skin. It, we're going to be extremely critical, but it's in a positive way. Um, we teach good, bad, and ugly. So we break down a couple clips of film that were uh, positive things in all three phases of the game, um, some things that were bad, and then some really ugly things that we need to get corrected or, or we're going to struggle. Um, and our kids respond. Um, we had a good week of practice, uh, regardless of the heat. Um, you know, I think at times they're looking at, at the heat. We, we have this, uh, it's called a wet bulb thermometer they put on the turf anymore. Okay. And they kind of go over and peek at it to see what, <laughs> what code level we're in with our trainer. But I yell at them. I'm like, get away from that thing because we're practicing. Every team in the state of Ohio is practicing this heat, and we're no different. And um, Our kids show up every day willing to work. When, when they are that willing to work, I mean, that's got to take at least some of the tools out of your tool belt that you have to use. I mean, you've got coaches all over the state all over this area that are, you know, just trying to push their kids to, to come to practice, to go to school. You don't have to necessarily do that. Your kids want to show up, they want to win, uh, and they want to be competitive in every game. But how nice is that for you as a coach to not only have that, but to continue to implement that from the foundation up? Yeah, it's been nice. They know the standard. Um, you know, week one, you heard our guys talk about the, the seniors that they looked up to in years past. Uh, now they're those guys. Our senior class knows um, that they need to be role models in that that standard and setting that tone and holding guys accountable to that and um, they've done a great job of that. How quickly do you, I know every coach is different, how quickly do you turn the page to the next week and then really start digging into film for the next week's opponent? Yeah so for us our staff it's Saturday afternoon after the kids leave you know we, we're critical with them and we break film down from our, our Friday night opponent and then we turn the page right away. The kids probably have through the weekend and up till Monday when we meet again. Um, you know, we do 7.15 to 7.30 a.m. weights there, it's, or uh, film, it's optional. Um, we get a majority of kids to respond to that. Um, but yeah, for our coaching staff, we have to flip the page. You know, normally we're exchanging film with our next week's opponent, either Friday night or early Saturday morning. And then we send stuff off to huddle assist to get broken down. And then our coaches are in majority part of the day. Um, our defensive guys break out and they, they go home for the weekends. Uh, offensively, we're in on Sunday. Just because of the nature of our practice, we come back in Mondays in offensive practice. So we've got to have all our game planning done for Monday's practice. Um, so, yeah, so shortly after the kids leave on Saturday, we turn the page and move on. And that's, and that's win or loss. That doesn't matter what happens the night win before. Or loss. That's yep. incredible. Yep. All right. Um, this week, give me a scouting report for, for what you guys are facing this week. Yeah, so Mansfield, uh, I, I've become familiar with their head coach. We, we coached in an all-star game a few years back in the north-south game, and we were actually roommates, and phenomenal coach. Um, gets a tremendous effort out of his kids. Um, I, I would compare them to a Cheney, um, you know, skill all over the place. They've got tremendous size up front. I think their nose guard's 6'2 uh, or 3, 300 pounds. Um, so our kids know they have their work cut out for them. We need to be fundamentally sound in all three phases of the game. Um, you know, and try to match our intelligence with their speed. Um, you know, if we come in and make mistakes again, it's going to be a rough night. We're, you know, they're, they're sound fundamentally in, on offense and defense, and we have to win the special teams phase of the game, uh, limit their athletes, the number of touches they get. Um, 
And that's the game plan we're going in with. You know, we always have to be sound in our run game. And I didn't think that we were Friday night. At times we were. We showed flashes. We popped off, you know, a couple 20-yard runs, a 16-yard run. And then we, just penalties would, would put us behind the sticks, and it, it shortens up your playbook when that happens. Well, that's I mean, I was just going to ask you that question. When you are behind the sticks, when you are behind on the scoreboard, how quickly do you have to adjust? I mean, some people kind of press that panic button quick, and you go away from the run to, to a lot of pass plays or, you know, uh, misdirections, things of that nature. How For you, how quickly are you, you know, dedicate or how much are you dedicated to that game plan, and how quickly do you have to push – that, that panic button, so to speak. Yeah, so we always go through a checklist of what we want to see, I know, from at least the offensive perspective. And, um, you know, we're really patient with that. Um, I think the thing that we got into last Friday was, you know, we, we have what we want to see in terms of looks and things like that. And then, you know, we had some unforeseen circumstances where kids were out for one reason or another. We had a couple players cramping, and that kind of shortens up your personnel packages and things you want to do from the offensive perspective. So we, we had to change throughout the game regarding those things. Um, but we're going to be patient and, and work through our game plan. Um, we don't let the defense dictate that to us. Um, and it's kind of you take it through the nature of the game. And, you know, coaches are, are great adapters. And, and, you know, we have to be willing to adapt to things that are open and we see. And, you know, we get calls from the box or we might see down on the field. And, um, got a great coaching staff, and we lean on those guys to be able to get us through those things. We're talking to Nick tonight. Can you give me a character uh, reference and a scouting report on him? Yeah, Nick's just a, a tremendous uh, student. He, he's academically, he's probably a top one of the top kids in his class. Um, team captain for us. Uh, you know, I, I grew up with his dad, so I know his dad played with my brother at Mount Union, and know them well growing up and Nick's Nick's from that same stock tough hard-nosed kid um, but extremely intelligent he gets our guys aligned and set and he's a kid you never have to remind where he needs to be or what route to run or things like that and um, you know that's where he he's a leader for our football team all right take it off the gridiron uh, it is Canfield Fair Week uh, which is I've learned a huge deal for the students and the student athletes and, and this entire community obviously for you what challenges do the Canfield, does the Canfield Fair present? And then uh, what enjoyment situation? I mean, do you get to the fair? Do you get to enjoy it at all? Um, and as, as an assistant, we, we, my wife and I try to get out with the kids. My kids are a little bit older now, so they're, they're out with their friends on their own. My wife and I will probably try to sneak away for some of our favorite foods uh, maybe one night. But we don't stay long. Um, you know, it was funny, a couple weeks ago, one of the moms asked at a gridiron meeting if the kids were going to be allowed to go to the fair. In the past, we haven't allowed them until after our game on Friday night. But um, our cheerleaders had a competition there at 11 in this morning, and I, I let our guys at least go see them and support them. Um, but then they know at least stay away, try to stay away um, until after our game on Friday, and then they can go and enjoy it with their families and enjoy the food and atmosphere. You said food. So my radar went up. My antenna went up. What, uh, what foods are, are the ones that you and the wife are sharing? I mean, it, as soon as I get there, it's an automatic corn dog. <laughs> is it the dollar dog? Or, or is it I heard I there's like know. Shirley's or, or whatever? Like I, I go the discount dog right underneath the stands. I, whatever corn dog. I, if I'm walking by a stand, I'm not picky. <laughs> um, yeah, corn dog. Um, my wife's a lemon shake girl. Um, you know, it, it, I, I change. I don't know. Do you it, have a sweet tooth? Oh, I have a sweet tooth. I got to get a Strauss's malt every year before I leave there. Okay. Um, it was something that my parents introduced me when I was a little kid. Uh, Strauss's malts, it's like kind of like a frosty okay. from back in the day. And uh, most people in my parents' generation know what it is. But if I asked my son or daughter, they'd have no clue. <laughs> I was fortunate enough my parents introduced that to me. But um, – yeah, it depends. Sometimes I'll get, uh, you know, a corn dog. Sometimes I'll get a Darusa sausage I got to go to. Yep. You know, there's different things, whatever I'm in the mood for. Coach, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Good luck against Mansfield. We're rooting for you. Thanks. Appreciate thank you. it. Yep.